Who's Swamp? Or three sides of the coin. Those fucking idiots. Come on. <laughs> Get real. <laughs> three sides of the coin this week. I think all we got to say is it's Eddie Trunk, and he talks about every issue you want to hear. That's it. Just let it roll. Two hours of Eddie Trunk. This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Everybody, welcome back to 2019. We're still here. (laughs) Sorry to disappoint you. (laughs) We had to take a week off because eh, it was the holidays. We just wanted to spend some time with family and friends and not record on New Year's Day. Um, but we're back. Michael Branville, Tommy Summers, Mark Cicchini, and we're all mm-hmm. waving to Lisa Martini out there. We miss you, Lisa. We'll get you back on. Um, so not a lot of uh, talk here up front because we've got a killer, killer, killer guest. It's our this best one. episode this year. Best episode this year. Oh, you're going to love this one. I want to do a quick reminder We've got Three Sides of the Coin Radio every Sunday, 8 p.m. Pacific, on the Monsters of Rock channel on the Dash Radio Network. You can listen to us on the Dash Radio app. Go to the Monsters of Rock channel or online at threesidesofthecoinradio.com. Very simple. Two ways to listen. 8 p.m. Pacific. It's live. I don't know what time it is in your time zone. That's your job. Okay. The other thing I want to make a quick mention of, we finally, we're just getting with the times. We just launched an Instagram channel. So follow us on Instagram if you like photos. We're posting more photos on there than we post on our Facebook page. So head over to Instagram and just search for Three Sides of the Coin. Follow us on our Instagram channel. You'll see a lot of cool photos. Uh, anything else you guys want to mention before we get into the interview? No, let's get right into th- You guys are going to dig this, man. We, this, yeah. this is, this is a returning no guest. Punch, you know, no punches pulled either. We, yeah. uh, you know, it's down and dirty. This yep. is third time for this guest. We've got Eddie Trunk sitting in, I kid you not, for probably two hours. And we talk all about everything that you guys want to ask Eddie about. And it's a very honest, very respectful, very mature conversation. But we talk about the tour. We talk about Tommy and Eric and makeup. We talk about lip syncing. We talk about selling guitars and selling um, uh, the the swords and everything. Excellent conversation with Eddie Trunk. I got to tell you, in, in my heart, this was the best conversation we've had with this guy. Yeah. So let's let it roll. Want to get your official three sides of the coin logo and shocker tee? Now you can. We ship worldwide. Get yours online at shop.threesidesofthecoin.com. Hey, Three Sides of the Coin listeners, I want to welcome our returning, I think this is his third time on the third, show, third, third time, it's his hat trick, right. I want to re- sure. welcome Eddie Trunk back to Three Sides of the Coin. Eddie, thank you for joining us. Guys, thanks for having me, appreciate it. Um, so let's let's just jump right in, I mean, it's, it's now 2019. Uh, this is the beginning of the end of the road tour in a couple weeks. Um, things are moving fast and furious now in the world of kiss. And let's just lay it out there. You've had some, some very big opinions about kiss and what's going on right now. You want to kind of just update us on what you think about all of this? Well, I mean, I think that it's, um, I think it's wise that they're calling it a day. Uh, I think it's probably uh, way, way, way too many years after when they should have. 
I, I've always maintained they should have ended it when they said they were going to end it the first time for the reasons they said they were ending it the first time. And this, the lines they gave at that time, which is don't want to stay too long at the party. Don't want to become a shell of once what you once once were. Don't want to be that band where people say, why are they still doing it? That guy can't do it anymore. Those are all things that they said in interviews around 2000, not me, they did. So I always maintain that around that time would have been, they, they should have stuck to it, but they didn't. And they did what they did. And some fans embraced it and loved it. And some kind of checked out like I did. But I do think that at this point, judging from videos I've seen and clips I've seen and things I've heard and the many callers that call my radio show, um, it's it's more than overdue that it's it's time to end. So I think it's you know it's I think it's an overdue farewell. But I, I think even they realize that no matter how much they try to to put band aids on things, it's it's the clock is the clock is ticked to the end. Eddie, I, I'm one of those uh, I'm guess I'm one of those fans that was very happy that they continued on, and and I want to make this point and get your opinion on it. Um. I've seen Kiss, you know, through the 70s all the way till now. I've seen about 200 shows. Uh, obviously a big fan. Um, do you remember the quality of those final farewell shows? I mean, if you're being honest, th- th- those were some of the worst Kiss shows I've ever seen. The very last ones with Ace and Peter. Um, again, there's video of those as well. It's well documented. I think... Um, once they got past the era of Peter and Tommy and got uh, uh, Eric and Tommy back from 2004 on. And, and again, you know, I'm basing this strictly on, on audio and video evidence. Um, I, I thought they picked their game up. Um, and, and, you know, the, if you remember those instant live CDs and everything through, um, those, they played better. And, and here's a band that I know we both love. Um, because you're a Deep Purple fan, I've heard you speak with them. They're they're probably my second favorite band. I could say the same thing about when Morris joined and after Aerie was there. They picked up their game. They started playing different songs. They started, you know, I I'm I want more music. I want more of my favorite bands. I want more Deep Purple. I want more Kiss, and and I got it um, through both of those acts. I love Sonic Boom. I love Monster. You know, I love Abandon. I, I love Infinity or you know, Infinite. I, I love all that stuff. I'm so happy that in 2018 I got to see both acts and they both kicked my behind and I loved it. And I'm just wondering because I'll, I'll be perfectly and I'm, and I'm not trying to, you know, uh, be uh, give you a hard time or anything. But, you know, doing the show for as many years as we have, whenever, you know, like when someone like yourself is on. Um, you know, on the radio, you know, obviously you're very well aware of all the YouTube clips that pop up with, you know, segments of your show. I'm, I'm sure you know all about it. And that's how we, you know, heard some and that's of the a, things. That's a key. You just, you just said a key word right there. Segments. <laughs> but go ahead. Correct. So, those, segments, but, those segments strategically, if, if I say something negative for um, 60 seconds and, there, and, and then the, there's another 10 minutes of positive... <laughs> But somehow the 10 minutes of positive never quite makes it to YouTube. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, That's like fair enough. That, is, that is fair enough, Eddie. Fair enough. Um, but at the same time, you know, and, and again, I'm going to kind of hold your feet to the fire a little bit here. And uh, and, and I hope you sure. know it's not. Uh, yeah. No, well, no, no. I, I welcome. Look, I welcome the, the debate and the discussion on this. I have no problem engaging in it at all. And at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you there's no, no right or wrong answer because Correct. it's strictly opinion and what you agree with and how you see it. But but I have no problem at all. Go ahead. All right. uh, for, you know, because for the last 15 years, you haven't liked what, I guess, Kiss represented or, you know, um, especially with uh, the Eric and Tommy situation. And as you said earlier, you wish they would have called it a day, you know, in 2000. If that's the case, why do you... On your show, at least it sure seems like you give a lot of time to current Kiss. 
why because, is that? If, if if you're down on it, why? Because if I put it this way, if I was in your shoes, and and I'll just throw out a band I'm not a fan of. I'm not a fan of Poison. If if people kept calling about, I just ignore it because I wouldn't want to talk about. It. it Doesn't interest me. I don't like their music. I don't like you know what that sort of thing. So I guess that's what I'm asking. If for the last 15 years you haven't been happy with the current in, you know incarnation of Kiss, it gets so much airtime on your show. I guess my question is why. Because I don't dictate the direction of my show. My callers do. Here's something else I've done for the last 15 years with KISS, uh, 15 years plus, which weighs into the same equation we just talked about, about the emphasis always being on the negative. I also uh, have played, have done a yearly KISS show on 35 markets in this country, including two of the biggest markets in America on FM radio that plays nothing but three hours of KISS. Every single era, every single lineup, including the current lineup. It just happened a few weeks ago. I've done it consistently. So my show, and I pride myself on my radio show being a platform for people to have an honest, open dialogue, whether I agree or disagree. And that is what I love to do. I think that we are in a world today that unfortunately... And, and I should tell people up front, I'm sick at the time we're doing this. So if I sound weird, that's why. Um, but we're in a time today where everything is so sanitized. Everything is so PC. If you give an opinion that's differing than anybody else, you get slammed for it. I despise that. I feel that everybody should be able to and be entitled to honest opinions. So my show is an open forum for that, whether it's people that had good or bad experiences at meet and greets or whatever. I also don't dictate what bands people want to talk about. I'm going to get the, the bulk of the calls I'm going to get are on bands that the bulk of my audience cares about, whether I like them or like what they're doing at the time or not. So the huge majority of my radio show, the, 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 the bulk of calls is going to be Van Halen. ACDC, KISS, Iron Maiden, uh, Judas Priest. That's just the core of what I do. And that's where the, uh, I take a ton of calls on the band tool. I'm not personally, I had two today on the band tool. I'm personally not a huge tool guy, but I'm not, not going to take that call because I'm not, that's not my job. And to go back to your point about, um, you know, equating something like deep purple to, you know, what KISS has done that's that's a fair point and it's a fair criticism i think it just comes down to asking the question when does the band stop being the band when does it stop being what you knew it for and how many contradictory things can you be told year in year, year out and keep believing it i would not deny to you at all that the band sounds way better and sounded with, and, and I would agree with you completely that there were some bad shows on that farewell tour. No question. But what I always felt with Kiss, what I really wish they would have done was, yes, the farewell tour was the end for all the reasons they said. At the time they said that they were ending it, they didn't say anything about Ace and Peter and the problems. They said, I, I, again, I challenge anybody, read the press clippings. Paul Stanley himself used the quote constantly, we don't want to be accused of staying too long at the party. Well, Ace and Peter aren't the only ones who the wheels fell off with. Nobody's wheels fell off harder than Paul's. And he's the guy that's so critical and so quick to point the finger to ev at everybody else. So you've got to look at it. I just, I just choose to look at things through a more objective lens. And, um, that's all I try to do. And I welcome the debate and the discussion on all sides of it. I'll always be a KISS fan. I always say that. I do so many positive things in KISS land. The headlines are always going to be on the negative. I get it. That's what makes the headline. That what, that's what makes the, clip, the clickbait on all the websites or on YouTube. Fine. I, I live that. I know that that's how it works with what I do. But I, I think that got to look at and, and here's the last thing i'll say i never no one i defy anybody to ever find any time i've ever said anything disparaging about the ability and playing of tommy fair or eric singer never have i done that 
Never have I said they aren't competent. Never have I said they shouldn't be in the band. Never have I said they aren't good musicians. Never have I blamed them for the cards they were dealt in what they need to do in this band. Anyone would take that gig in a million years who wouldn't. So it's just really comes down to how you see it. And as I've said consistently, where I fall as a fan is pretty much of the mindset of the band stopped being the band when they started, you know, trying to sell us two other guys as Ace and Peter. And that's how I saw it. That's how I still see it. And it's nothing to do against Tommy or Eric, but that's where the line was drawn. And it's like, okay, maybe they made some good songs since then. Maybe they played some, some good shows. But to me, as a fan, that's where, that's where the band ended to me. I can't, I can't in good conscience look at a band that I loved my whole life with a guy dressed as Ace Freely singing Shock Me. It's just not going to happen. Steve Morse came into Deep Purple, and man, he was nothing like Richie Blackmore. He carved his own path. He looked his own way. He did his own thing. He put his own stamp on that band. It's radically different to me. Well, you can use another example, though, that kind of backs up what I'm saying. Look at what Richie Faulkner brings to Judas Priest. Don't tell me that his look didn't have something to do with it. He looked like KK. If you didn't know any different and you were just a very casual fan, and you saw a picture of the blonde guy with the sunglasses. And I'll, and I'll go a step further. It's no different than what ACDC did, you know, when uh, on their on the last tour, you know, uh, Malcolm's uh, uh whatever nephew or whatever he, he he mocked his moves he walked back and forth oh, you know i he, i just I, I can't i couldn't disagree with you more on all that i mean i don't i mean you can't a guy that has a resemblance to someone and you know with blonde hair or a guy that was a, a relative that dresses a little similar i mean you can't but the, the I, stage in, moves in my, are the same i i've seen those bands multiple times i mean i'm a huge i love I, those I, bands as much as i love kids and those shows yeah, were I, I just I just cannot in any way equate that to an entire persona and character that somebody completely created. And it's just, uh, again, this is an old conversation because it's like, it is, Eddie, but I, ha- Eddie, it just really depends upon how you see it. Eddie, did you have the kiss army kit growing up? No, I did not. Oh, oh I'm, I, I'm, and I'm again, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, be a jerk or anything back in 76 when you opened up your kiss army kit this is 1976 there's a little yellow pamphlet in there that says the vampire and the lover and the spaceman and the cat man it wasn't gene paul peter and a a coin was selling that as far back as the beginning and 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 really you know when kiss back in 2000 was moving forward it didn't make any sense to try and have, you know, the squirrel boy or whatever that is. That, that that didn't make any sense. You know, they they put the cat man and the space man out there. And, and you know, Gene and Paul even sell themselves as that as well. So, I mean, that concept of, of the characters was pretty much there from the beginning. Uh, you know, that's, see, that's all revisionist history. And that's all the stuff that, in my view, they want to sell you. That's that's what they need to sell you now. So that's why it works for them to say that now. Well, the proof is in at, the first. I'm, well, I'm not making it up. The, no, but but when but well, when I every Kiss record I bought credited Ace, Peter, Gene, and Paul on the back of the record, not Spaceman, Catman, whatever. And and you know it it's just it's it's just funny because these. These points, if you look throughout Kiss's history, I don't think there's any band that's been more changed the story to accommodate what they need to sell you at that time more. And that's kind of a nice way of saying something else to their fans. But that's, that's what they want to tell you because, you know, when Ace and Peter came back, there's only one Spaceman. There's only one Catman. There's only one Ace. There's only one version of this band because that's the line they want to sell you. When it's Mark St. John joined the band, because when Mark St. John joined the band, he's the greatest guitar player in the world. Sure. A year later, he's he's worthless. He's not needed. He's can't play. He's stiff on stage. He's got problems. Vinnie Vincent is the greatest songwriter. The greatest thing. Two years later, you know, he's a damaged goods. He's a problem. 
look, you can rewrite history a million times over. I just, for me, uh, cannot buy this. These guys are characters and can be changed and played by anybody. As I've said a million times, they would have let these guys be their own personas. I'd have no problem with it. But, but, don't this, but I can't. I, and, and I don't and I don't buy the the ridiculousness of like, well, there's no other makeup designs that they could have done. And, uh, um, you know, that's the only thing people recognize. Hey, I think that's ridiculous. And I'm going to tell you something why this rubs me so wrong. This perception of anybody can be in kiss. And these are just characters. I don't know how old you are, but I'm 54. I'm 53. I grew up. I grew up. At, how old are you? How old are you? I, I'm. This is Tommy. I'm 53. Okay. Well, so if you know all, Tommy. I'm 53 as well. Okay. There you go. So we're all in the same wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. I grew up around that time when I was into Kiss, which was high school years. And 78, 79, 80, 81, the prime years, I wanted, people wanted to physically beat me for liking Kiss. Kiss was viewed as such a joke from mm -hmm. 79 to like 82, 83 ish, especially where I lived and in other parts of this country as well, that people wanted to physically beat you up if you even said you liked them. That's how ridiculed you were. That's how bad it was. I, I had somebody that used to intentionally hit the bumper of my car when I got my driver's license because it had a KISS bumper sticker on it. So when, and the big detraction against KISS that anybody in that time that was a huge KISS fan railed against was that KISS was a fabricated band. That Kiss was not a real band. It didn't matter who was in Kiss. They weren't real musicians. Anybody could be in that band. And it, they're just a bunch of hacks that were made up. And it's not a real band. And what Kiss has done, essentially, after fighting that perception as fans in those years for so long, and the loyalty of fans standing behind them saying, that's not true. This is a real band. This is really Ace, Peter, Gene, and Paul. That's what it says on the records. Those are the guys that played on the records. Those are the guys that we go to see. When I went to Madison Square Garden, 77, 79, there were banners hung up all over that building, and everyone said Ace, Peter, Gene, Paul. Never in my life did I see one that said Spaceman, Demon. So to me, it was about those guys as fans, we fought to prove to people this wasn't some corporate entity brand. It was a band. And now the band themselves have told us the complete opposite after all these decades. It is a brand. Anyone can be in it. And now it doesn't even matter if we're really playing live anymore. But I guess my question to you then would be, since you said that you think that the, the playing has improved in many situations because of Eric and Tommy. I've been a fan just as long as you have. And, and I guess I look at it differently that things that you think should last a certain way don't. And I look at the reunion as a gift that, okay, they all did get back together. They did their thing. And to Mark's point, it was pretty ugly there towards the end, but I've really enjoyed all these years of going out and seeing them live. And I also like, the last two records. So from that perspective, is it just literally the persona piece that rubs you the wrong way? Because whether they're engineering this or not, I think some of it's crowd engineering as well, because, you know, if, if I had the choice, I'd much rather hear Tommy Thayer sing one of his songs off of the last couple of records um, versus Shock Me. But it's almost become a staple in the way that I'm sure if I went to see Deep Purple, I'd have to hear him play Smoke on the Water or any number of other songs that are just expected for them to do. And I look at it no different than, you know, going to see a Batman movie. You know, I've enjoyed some more than others, but it's 
it's still a different actor playing the same type of character and it's not like it's being done in a disrespectful way so i guess i'd like to understand if it's just that piece that rubs you the wrong way more than anything else oh yeah well i've said i've said a million times if they would have let tommy and eric be their own people all for it i just i don't i personally still to this day can't understand how anybody who calls themselves a, a, a hardcore Kiss fan can just be okay with that. I mean, somebody told me on the Kiss cruise that just happened that they played Shock Me not once but twice with Ace on the cruise. It's like, there's, there's, is there nothing out of bounds? It's, there's no, there's, I don't care who owns what. It's just like, have, have just, you know, some respect for the legacy and the history of the band just don't everything doesn't have to be homogenized and i i don't know it's just to me it's, it's every line has been blurred all, hey, Eddie, all should, should people, ace of should ace have called up paul stanley every time he does love gun on the cruise ace I was on on the song. what's that ace, why would ace have to do that he played on the song why would he call an explanation on kiss something songs, he played kiss, on and help create? Kiss I don't, I don't see why he would have had to do that. Well, What's shock that? means a kiss song. They're off the same record. Kiss is playing kiss songs. That's what they're supposed to do. I, I, I've never understood why, why Ace goes deeper into the... Or excuse me, I know I don't understand why Ace wants to play Love Gun or Detroit Rock City. He's got I his own... Well, kid. I don't either. I agree. I agree with you on that. But but the the, the common thread is that um, if Kiss plays Love Gun, Kiss played on it, and if Ace plays Love Gun, Ace played on that too. You know that they, they, they those are songs that whoever's playing them, those people actually played the songs. But but I just to me, i people can do and like whatever the hell they want. They don't. Nobody needs my approval. God knows the band doesn't. God knows the fans don't. If you're down with this and you love it and you think it's great, great. To me, for every band I love, there are lines drawn in the sand. And it's just something that as a lifelong fan who literally, to the point, almost physically fought for this band, how much I loved them, to defend that perception of they're this fabricated thing that anybody can be in. And then hear them and yourself and others say, well, it's kind of like going to a Batman movie. It, it, literally, it literally feeds into every single thing that was hurled against this band that, that would made them so marginalized and so ridiculed for so long. And quite frankly, why, and nobody cares about this, including myself, but why they're still not looked at as a legit band by so many people. Now, because it serves them, they're actually feeding into the into what was always cast against them they're, what they fought against for decades they've actually themselves have caved to and created that's well, why Eddie, we, but, you know, we've, we've all won through. Eddie we've won the war Eddie we won the war because we're all the same age if I would have told you back in 1983 that Kiss is going to be playing you know Tiger Stadium in the mid 90s and Pat Benatar Ario Speedwagon and Styx you know, are playing the local, you know, 3000 seater, you would have thought I was fucking crazy. You know, fast yeah, forward to 2019, kids. it's the same thing. We won. Us oh, kids no, fans, we won the war. Kiss isn't playing Tiger. Kiss isn't playing any stadium. Uh, no, no, no. But still, still do, do you look, look at where Kiss is playing on these, on the, on this final run. Yeah, they're Pat playing Benatar single playing, night. playing that. They're, play, I'm, they're playing I'm, I'm, single nights in arena. Someone our age, someone our age. Look at that. Look at that difference. But you know, we went through this too, Eddie. Like for me in Minneapolis, I took a lot of crap for being a Kiss fan. A, a lot of crap for a very long time. I never heard the, some of the stuff that you were saying with regards to them being a manufactured band. I mostly heard that they just suck and can't play because Led Zeppelin is just so much more superior to them. That right, was and that it was a kiddie band. And the big thing was kiddie band 
and fabricated band and can't play and it's not a real band yeah but you know i mean but we went through all that crap as well you know up here in minneapolis and i guess it's one of those things where i just figured that it really at the end of the day didn't matter what any of those idiots thought because i got something out of it and i enjoyed it and so for me at least for the last 15 years or so whatever it's been since the reunion i've really enjoyed going to those shows because there's so few bands still now around that I actually like. And I look for new music all the time. I'm not much of a metal person, so whether Judas Priest is around or not is not relevant for me. But I really like some of the newer stuff out there, like Blackberry Smoke. And you know, and people are telling me I'm nuts all the time because I don't like Wasp. But for me, Kiss was such a big part of my life and such a staple growing up. I mean, for Christ's sakes, we're three idiots talking about a band, and we've been doing this now for five years. I mean, for Christ's sakes, at least you have a national radio show. You're making a living off of it, and you do talk about stuff other than Kiss. So, I well, mean, for that's, me, that's just the passion's it. I mean, still there. Well, and that, yeah, but that, and that's just it. I mean, you, you I, I've been, I've said this before, too. God knows Kiss doesn't need me. And thankfully, I'm in a position where I don't need Kiss. I've got the biggest bands in the world coming to me every day and doing interviews, and I'm doing these amazing things. I don't, I have no, I have never had an interest to be at war with Kiss fans because I still consider myself one of them. I just truly believe that every band, no matter what band you love and no matter how much you love them, if you're being honest with yourself, there's a period in their history you don't care for. I can go down the line categorically with every other band I love and tell yeah. you about that. I yeah. love UFO. There's a huge period I checked out. I love Rush. I've been open for years with Rush fans and the band that I completely checked out during the 80s and the synth period. Don't I'm like it, want nothing to do with it. So, and I've had all that, those dialogues and conversations. Def Leppard, huge chunk where I checked out, no interest. Too poppy. So those debates and discussions are good and healthy and fun. And it's fortunate for me that I have found a way for now 36 years to make a living with six live radio shows a week nationally and a syndicated show and a podcast and all these other things I do to have a platform for fans to engage in what we're doing right now, whether it be pro con, whether it be kiss, whether it be Van Halen, whether it be whatever. So I'm blessed and lucky. I have that. But the, the reason why I have that, and the reason why I've survived in this business for decades now doing this is because I'm going to give my opinion and I'm not going to be, I'm not going to, you know, feel like I ever can't. And I encourage my audience to do the same thing, whether they agree or disagree. But just the strange thing about Kiss is they're the one band that you do that with. And maybe it's a credit to how completely passionate a segment of the fan base is. But you can't do that. You have to buy and accept every single thing that they're selling you that day under those terms and be on board fully at that moment or you're the enemy. Oh, I and disagree. I, I disagree, ridiculous. Eddie. Eddie, I disagree. It's no different than what you just said. I'm with you, man. I After moving pictures, maybe part of signals for the most part. I, But... I didn't start telling people that, you know, they're not good anymore or that, you know, I, I, you know, there's a segment of, you know, I wasn't crazy about the crazy nights era and the hot in the shade era. I, the, the tours were great, but I didn't like the records, you know, I just um, but I still on crazy nights. Yeah. Well, I, I we, that, that, the whole crazy nights era is a big joke between Michael and I. Um, I love I love crazy nights. The album, the oh, tour, we'll do a the tour. Show on that with you too. <laughs> See, that's the other big miscon. That's the whole other big misconception here about me, which I, I want to make sure that I put out there as well, because that's the one that makes me re really laugh. Is the fact that I'm the original lineup only guy. I go toe to toe with anybody on anything, uh, from Carnival of Souls back. So. I mean, I love the 80s and, and all those that stuff. Um, 
and know those records inside out and was there for every bit of part of that too. So anyway, go ahead. What were you saying? Oh, I, I was just saying, you know, I, I checked out two um, on other bands. I never checked out on Kiss. I, I didn't like, maybe not like, again, like Crazy Nights, but I still went to the tour. I still bought the record, you know. I always knew that, you know, eventually I'd get rewarded, and I was with uh, with Revenge. It was like, okay, we, we're back on track again, you know. When that came out, I was like, this is what I was waiting for, and it was really no different than when I was a kid. I wasn't so crazy about, I thought Dynasty was good, but, it, you know, it didn't sound like the previous six records at all. And again, you know, being a Detroit kid here, you know, I was really into Nugent and Aerosmith and all, you know, Kiss could stand toe to toe up until 78 with those. And then Kiss kind of took a little bit of a left turn, you know, obviously Unmasked didn't sound like side four of Alive 2, you know, um, and the same thing with The Elder. I, I always say, and, and I know you can understand this too, because you're the same age, you, were, you did it in real time. Um, you know, when the elder came out, you're like, what the fuck is this? You know, it, this, this was too far of a left turn for me, but I, you know, I bought the record and was hoping they'd tour, which they obviously didn't. But then when creatures came out, it was like, all is right with the world again. This is what, you know, and again, that, that goes back to the music and who's playing. I mean, that wasn't the original band, much like you were saying about crazy nights. You know, I didn't care about original band. Uh, we have a little line here um, on three sides. When I walked out of Cobo Hall on February 23rd, when I saw them on the Creatures of the Night to or tour, I said to my friend, no Peter, no Ace, no problem. Because, you know, when I saw them a couple years earlier at the Silverdome on the Dynasty tour, it was good and I enjoyed it. But the show I saw at Cobo on the Creatures of the Night tour with this new guitar player and, you know, a, a recent addition on drums, was way better than the band, the original band that I saw, you know, on the Dynasty tour. I, that was, that, that had the energy and the drive and, you know, so I look at everything like that, you know, and that's what I see now in 2019. I love the band. I love what they're doing. I, you know, I, it's when I, when that curtain drops, I'm 12 years old again and, and I love it. And I just don't understand I, you know, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to have you on and so far a great discussion uh, all the way around, but I don't, I don't understand the negativeness ar around it. And there's, and there's a few things we can keep going on this subject a little bit, but more, but, but there's a couple things I wanted to talk about on some of the other things I heard. So, well, Mark, Mark, um, get, yeah, Mark well, we can, but just in closing, <clears throat> if you want to just, just in closing out that subject, I, I'm transparent about it. I'm honest about it. It doesn't from the day they did it, it doesn't and never will sit right me to see them have and, and i don't people can try to tell me they're just characters all they want that's ace freely and peter chris and paul stanley and gene simmons and it does not and never will feel right and look right to see two other guys in those outfits in that persona doing that act it's 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 completely wrong to me i'll never accept it it makes no sense and I have no problem with the people doing it. I have no problem with their abilities as players. I don't deny to you at all that they probably, not probably, I'm sure they make the band sound way better now and are professional and on it and great players and all that. But at the end of the day, it's like, where do, you, where do you put your toe in the sand and how much are you willing to accept? We're in a day and age now people are willing to accept holograms they're willing to accept bands with no original members they're willing to accept bands with one original member they're willing to accept bands that are not even playing live i mean where's the line drawn anymore concert tickets are thousands of dollars what they're they're commanding it's like when is anybody going to call something for what it is and say hey is that is that really what it's being marketed as and uh, there is no right or wrong answer here. It's strictly your opinion and where you sit on it and how you feel about it. And that's how I felt from day one. And, uh, and that feeling hasn't changed. And, you know, just to go back to what you said before, after the farewell tour, to me, what, what Kiss should have done and what I'd love to have seen them do, I don't, I don't think any of them should ever have stopped playing I don't think that Gene and Paul should have retired and gotten in rocking chairs, but I think there's a, I mean, they, they could have done 
solo. I would have loved to have seen what would have happened if Paul would have dedicated himself fully to a, a solo career and solo albums and gotten into a more comfortable, you know, situation for his voice and to be able to sit there and play, you know, with a cool band or something like that. I mean, who knows what we would have gotten the last 10 or 15 years from these guys musically if that would have happened. Instead of just taking something and wringing every last drop of it and spinning it every way possible to continue to sell and market it. And here's the last thing I'll say about this is like, what happened to the line and all the stuff we've been getting sold leading in before this end of the road was announced? All we kept hearing about was anyone can be in KISS and we're all going to replace ourselves. And they again, these are things they said, not me. So if that's the case, how come we're not hearing about that right now? My theory is because you'll hear about that when they're years. done yeah. milking this. Because you can't put that message out there when you're trying to get a thousand dollars for people to stand on the floor. So but, this and is I, the I, end I, of the road until we reconvene with the officially sanctioned tribute. Well, and, and this may not be the right time to have this discussion, but one thing that we should discuss at time, sometime, and I don't have the facts on this, is how are these prices for these different shows determined? Because my understanding is that nowadays, it doesn't matter whether it's KISS or whomever it is, they get X amount of dollars per night to play the show, and it's the promoters who will end up choosing the pricing. Do you well, know that? Concert to be? Ticketing, well, con let me just jump in real quick, because... Again, this is not. This is way, way beyond Kiss, right? But, and Kiss is not the only one with exorbitant ticket prices at all. So they are far from the only offenders here. But ticket pricing, I, I talked about this on my radio show, and I, I use this terminology, and I really think that it's pretty accurate. What what concert tickets have become across the board right now is the equivalent of buying an airline ticket meaning that based on uh, availability is going to determine how much you pay because let's face it. It used to be the front sections went to people who stood in line the longest and waited for the tickets. Now they're not even available to the general public because they're essentially scalped by the artists themselves as part of their VIP packages. And then you've got all these other scenarios where you've got, you know how many times I hear from people call my show? I bought a ticket. It cost me $400. Guy sits down next to me. He paid 25 for his ticket. Because then you've got two, three days out from the concert, the ticket dump. When the tickets are sitting there unsold, and they do the Groupon deals or the four for a hundred and start dropping prices. So if you're a, a concert ticket purchaser, and fortunately, because what I do, I've not had to be in that situation very much. But if you are, fans are going to catch on real quick. The smartest thing to do is wait to buy your ticket until a day or two before, mm -hmm. because they're, they're basically changing the dynamic every day and repricing tickets just to sell them. But you can tell people that all day long and it's not going to crack the surface for some because they're so worried about where they're going to sit that they just literally can't play the waiting game. Right. Which is why that person, unfortunately, will pay more. 10 times as much as the person next to them. Yeah. It's like looking for an airline airline seat as well. But, you know, yes. and, and I, you know, we respect your opinion. That's why we've got you on. And, and, you know, again, like you said, neither right nor wrong. But the one thing I, I wanted to take issue with is I don't I think that when you say that we're being sold something uh, at the moment and that, you know, you're painting with a really broad brush that we all fall into that. I don't necessarily agree with that because we've always said also here on our show, vote with your wallet. So if it's something that doesn't interest you, you don't get involved with it, whether it be oh, buying completely. for five thousand dollars. I use I I, this. I use the same exact terminology, and I agree with you completely. Nobody tells you you have to buy it. The thing, the thing I'll never forget, I'll never understand in a million years, is I'll have people call my show all the time and bitch about ticket prices or VIPs or prices of this or that, 
and they'll go off about it. And then I'll say, sir, are you going to go? And they'll go, yeah, I bought the ticket. <laughs> well, that's a great like, segue. Bingo. That's, that's, that's what I wanted to bring up. Well, well Mark, 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 give me a, give me a moment here. So Eddie's mic again, Mike for the first time, because we, we let Mark have the microphone here. A um, couple points. So I agree with you when you said that, you know, it seems like everybody's checked out of a band at some point. And, I I checked out of Kiss for four or five years back 2008 because I was just fed up with the stale set list, the stale staging that for 10 years it hadn't changed. And I finally said that's enough is enough. I'm not going to another show. I'm not buying another ticket. It, I, The last show I went to before I checked out, I, I actually left early right before the encore because I turned to my girlfriend and I said, let's get out of here and beat the traffic because I know the next three songs and I know it's going to be said. Hey, Mike, Mike, let me just ask you, did you say that was what year, 2008? 2008. Okay, that ironically would be the last time I ever saw Kiss live as well. So I, I, I checked out then. Now, I finally went back to see him in 2014 at the Vegas um, at the Vegas residency because they'd finally started to change the staging. The set list got mixed up a little bit. It still wasn't a super deep set list, but I agree. I think everybody at some point in their, their history as a fan has some level of I'm tired. I'm dissatisfied. I'm checking out. Now, what extent you do that is up to each individual person, but I respect that you and anybody out there does that. And even when I checked out, I would have fans email me and message me and call me. He's like, man, Mike, I saw what you were saying about the show. and I'm a little concerned. Should I take my son to see Kiss? And I'd be like, damn straight. If your son has never seen Kiss, go. You'll have a freaking blast. I just can't do it. I'm not telling you to do what I'm doing because it's it's specific to me, not to you. If you want to go have a great time and you want to buy that ticket, go for it. Have a blast. And, Mike, I tell my audience the same exact thing. When people call me, I say, this is how I feel. If you want to go, if you want to bring your kids because they never saw the band or a version of the band, go. Have fun. Have a party. Not for me. I'm not telling you what to do. So I couldn't agree with you more. We're in complete agreement on that. Yep. I, I, it all comes down to subjective. The reason why you know, I tried to hang in there with the Ace and Peter thing, because obviously there was Peter there for one point without Ace, Ace there for one point without Peter. I tried to weather it for a little bit. But I got to be honest with you, one of the beyond, beyond the visual, which I just can't get past in the whole mentality of that, the other thing was, yeah, the set list, but also I saw a real drop in energy on the stage. I, I just saw a real drop in fire coming off the stage. I started to see the cracks that come with the band that started to do exactly what they swore they didn't want to do in 2000, and that stayed too long. We all know Kiss is not the Eagles. They can't sit on bar stools and strum acoustic guitars. There's got to be that fire. And not, I'm not talking about real fire. I'm talking about the fire from the band, the energy that comes off the stage. And it just started to get old and sleepy to me. And I was just like, you know, I don't want the bands that I love. I don't want my final memories of them to be like this. And my feelings that, about that are not exclusive to Kiss. I, I feel that way about all the bands I love. One of my favorite bands in the world, UFO, announced that they're retiring this year. And everyone said to me, oh, man, you must be so bummed. I said, no, I'm not. I'm actually not. Because as much as I love the band, I acknowledge that a man at 71 years old is not going to be able to be that good anymore. So let him get out while my last memory is still that they're pretty darn good and pretty darn close to what I remember still, as opposed to sitting there and being like, man, that's not just what, that's not what it was. It's just not the same anymore. I don't want that. I'd rather just put a, put a, a stop in and that's it. Now for me, I can't do that because 
my job is to still be educated and talk to my audience about what's going on. So even if I personally don't stay a fan, it's my job to still keep up with what's going on and talk to the audience about it and engage with them about it positively or negatively. And that's why I tell them all the time, you guys should do what you want to do. Go if you want to go. And guys, I use the same exact tagline and have for years. Vote with your wallet. The one thing I'll never understand is the people that call and bitch and bitch about any band. And they say, yeah, but I still went. Yeah, yeah. Say, exactly. Because then what you, what, what you said means nothing because you just, your, your purchase was your vote. And that's what you told the band. Exactly right. Yeah, people complain we, about who's in bands and lineups and this, how do they play them with this singer and not with that guy or, I'm not talking about Kiss, I'm talking about any band. And then they tell me they still went. And I'm like, whoa. If you want something to change, your, 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 your endorsement is buying the ticket. Yeah. So if you don't like it, don't endorse it. And, and, and Eddie, so, something that, that you brought up that I think us as fans and even the bands never foresaw, never imagined, was being on stage when they're 70 years old. You know, as we were fans back in 79, 80s, and as these bands were coming out of the 70s, did any of us, any of us think, oh, my God, they're still going to be doing this when they're 70, 75 no years way. old? And, and I think that's part of the problem. Nobody understands how to deal with it and how to get out of it. How, how, do, you, how, do, you, yep. how do you leave gracefully? When there's still people that want you, when when you're when you're a rock star lead singer who in your heart you're 25 years old, but you've had both knees replaced, hips replaced, your shoulders are replaced, you know you can't move. It's something that I don't think anybody ever foresaw. Well, we can use no and use and, 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 and a band like for a bit. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say, you can you look at Motley. I mean, I don't know what's going on with them, but it's just like, you know, they made the whole big deal about retiring and were signing a contract and they were on the, uh, their, their tour for two or three years. And now all of a sudden you've got Nikki six hyping stuff everywhere. There's new promotional photos of the four of them together. I know they're recording new music, but it's just like, so then where does that go? So it seems like every band has that kind of thing going on. Well, Motley, it's, that's about the promotion for this movie, which is coming. And whether they actually do live shows or not remains to be seen. They're actually the one band, and I was saying the other day, they're on the clock right now because they're the one band that has actually retired and stayed retired. But they're very much on the clock as far as, uh, uh, as, far as that's concerned. But no, the, the point about the age thing is interesting because when, when we were kids, you know, 30 years old was – old you know right. and you didn't imagine people going older but then when you see you just got look everybody's got their expiration date on, on being good at what they can do athletes obviously are the biggest example of that one of my best friends is a, a was a, is a hall of fame major league baseball player mike piazza he knew that when the time was up when his knees were shot he couldn't catch throw hit like he used to he had to go find something else to do and that's what he ended up doing with kiss. It's a little bit more difficult because again, kiss kiss can't do an easy transition because they can't go up there in jeans and t-shirts and sneakers and stand there. That's not what people expect or want. Although I actually would have been fine with that. If they would have come off of the farewell tour and went back into some sort of non makeup version, either individually or together, um, that wouldn't have been so bad. Just like what, kind of like what Paul did on that Live to Win tour. I thought that would have been cool. But again, I don't know. You know, you got to know. You just got to be able to say no to when to say. You got to know when to say when. And there's only very, very, very few people in their 70s that are still really good. Uh, Mick Jagger, Steven Tyler, Sammy Hagar just a couple that come to mind. Glenn Hughes, who isn't 70, but will be soon. These people, these are just absolute freaks. But outside of that, that very rare circle, yeah, you know, that you can push it to a certain degree, but 
you 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 got to know when to get out with your 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 dignity intact in my opinion it, it was funny you brought up glenn hughes because did you see those shows this summer eddie at all the ones that he did uh, doing yeah. all the purple uh, th- that was yeah. one of the probably one of the highlights of my concert going last year and it was funny because i was going to bring that up when you were talking about the whole you know ace doing um because you went to the show weren't you a little disappointed he did highway star and smoke on the water yeah, and I talked to him about that, and he just said that for him, you know, he played those songs in that band as much as the original version did at that time, because he had been in the band for a long time, and he just felt that uh, that, that those were songs that you know he had an affinity for. It's you know I've seen Joe Lynn Turner do those songs as well, and he did one studio album with Deep Purple, so which is extremely he, underrated. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, album. I think it, I think it was a little bit. I think it was a little bit of that, but I also think the God's honest truth of why Glenn did that, probably pretty wisely, is because unfortunately in America, outside of maybe Burn, there's nothing from his era of Deep Purple that's well known here. So to keep an audience interested, he had to include a couple of the songs that they're all going to know. Well, that, that kind of goes back to, back to I the guess, my shock. argument with the, with the shock me. It, it's Kiss, and that's what people want to see. Um, you, know, you know, I remember I, going to one of those those um, conventions they had back in 95. And I remember walking in thinking, this is going to be fantastic because I'm going to get them to see get to see them play all of these songs that they may not have played before, get to see them in an acoustic setting and all that. And this guy in front of me kept yelling, I love it loud. He wanted to hear him play that acoustically. And that pretty much sums up the experience, I think, with most bands and some of these fans is no matter what you would love to have them do or do differently, they always go back to the songs that they are expected to play. And, you know, good, bad or otherwise, Shock Me is one of them. It's an ongoing well, shock me to me. I just think that that's d- d- disrespectful, and it's not to me. That's not oh, a song. I couldn't disagree that's, more. To me, that's Thing not a Beth. song. That's to me. That's not a song. That's a. Uh, it wasn't a hit single. It's not something that's you know, got to be in the set to me. But neither here nor there. I, I, again, if people are cool with that, have fun. But for me, I have this debate with my radio audience all the time about band set lists. And what are they going to play? And how come whatever band they go see, whether it's Def Leppard, Journey, Sticks, any of these classic rock bands, why every summer do they play the same exact songs? And this band just put out a new record. They played one song. They didn't play any songs from it. it you know, we look, we're sitting here. You guys have a podcast about Kiss. I'm, regardless of what people may or may not think, again, I still identify strongly as a Kiss fan. There's no band that I've been more attached to. I had more Im- impact on me growing up um, that I'm still very fight for in a lot of ways. My gosh, I could tell you stories for days about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and what went on leading into that and how much I screamed about getting them in. Not to say I had a role in getting them in, but I had a, I had a voice with the people that do. Let's just say oh, yes. that. You talked about it on that metal show all the time. Yeah, I mean, so... so I forget where I was going with all that, but, oh, about the set list. But the thing is, is that we, so, so my point is we are the hardcore, you, me, the people listening to this, people that, that, that listen to my radio show, the people that listen to me for two hours a day, essentially do sports talk for rock fans on, on, on satellite radio. We live and breathe this stuff. We care about this stuff. And these bands that we go to see, we, we, go, we love their songs. We know their records. You and I could sit here and talk about, you know, um, tomorrow or what makes the world go round, which is better from Unmasked. I mean, we know that. The, the, the 90% of the people going to see Kiss don't have a clue. Like, they don't have a clue. They're just going. And this isn't just with Kiss. This is with anybody to going to hear rock and roll all night. And, you know, in Kiss's case, unfortunately, very few really 
bona fide huge hits. But, you know, if you're going to see ACDC, you know what songs the majority of people are going to see. And the minute any of these bands goes into a deep track or here's something from our new record, the beer lines and the bathroom lines line up. And these, these bands know that. And touring has become so incredibly competitive because there's more tours on the road than ever before, because it's the only place these guys can make money, that they are not going to take a chance. No band is taking a chance tinkering with that fan base, to the, you know, because they're coming through every summer, that if they didn't play the hits and people walked out, then the next year, uh, you know what, we didn't know a lot of the songs those guys played. We're going to go to the other show the next week instead, because we don't have enough money. So I get it. I get why bands do that. I've seen it firsthand. I mean, I'll go to see the bands that I love. Went to see Scorpions once, and they started playing the song Animal Magnetism. Ooh. And I lost my mind. I lost my mind. I was on the chair like, holy shit. I looked around. The whole arena was dead. Like, nobody, like, they were, like, like the energy just came out of the room. So I it was see like it. The, the last... Selfishly. Selfishly, was like I'd love person. for them to do the, the deep tracks, but I see why they don't do it. I see why bands stay with the stuff that works. Do you remember when Aerosmith did Kings and Queens on the last tour? Like, the place was like, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, this is one of their greatest musical songs ever. And the place just kind of, I couldn't believe it. I was looking around going, are you guys, this is Aerosmith. I I remember it vividly because I was probably the only only other person besides you losing their mind. Yeah. Hey, I I want to, speaking of the set list and, and, and moving past the, the one that you said, you know, was kind of blasphemous, uh, uh, shocked me. How about Beth with the way that the band plays? Have have you seen Eric sing Beth with the band? I mean, I'm talking like uh, anything from like 2016 or when they did that uh, on, 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 on that tour. Because now they're taking a song and playing it different than, you know, it was originally recorded. What is your opinion on that? Um, I haven't seen him do it. I've not seen him do it or have I've not heard it. No, because I love it. I I love the arrangement. You know, they're all on stage playing, you know, um, and I just think it was a great idea. And let me tell you, the crowd freaking loved it. And uh, it kind of needs to do that. See, I can understand, and again, I apologize for my voice being raspy because I'm sick. Good. Um, I can understand. I can understand Kiss needing to try to find a way to do best for sure, because here's the simple truth, and this is not a diss at all. This is just the unfortunate truth. If you're being really honest as a Kiss fan, Kiss does not have that many hit singles. They do not have that many songs at all that the mainstream rock fan knows. They're not like Aerosmith or ACDC where there's 15 songs, 10 songs. So with Kiss, it really comes down to two or three across the board big songs, none bigger than Rock and Roll Night. A close second in that category would be Beth. So Kiss, Kiss I, needs to I don't to understand find... why, they never, why they didn't do Hard Luck Woman. You know, that was a pretty big song in um, top 20. Yeah. And yeah. That you, could also make a never... case, you could also make a case for, you know, it would be interesting for them to do now. And I don't know. I have no idea what they'll do on this tour and if they'll think about doing it. But as generations move forward, a different every generation has its, its version of classic rock. I have a lot of debate on my radio show about Van Halen, Hagar Roth, Hagar Roth. Anytime anybody calls into my show and says they're pro Hagar in that debate, I always ask, how old are you? And nine times out of 10, they're at least a good 10 years younger than the Roth person. Now, kids had more so than maybe even the 70s, in the 80s, four, five, six songs that were maybe not huge radio hits, but huge MTV hits. And what's bigger, what was bigger than anything in the eighties MTV. So it would be really interesting to see them start to work in tears are fallen and 
uh, well, they believe live, heaven's on fire uh, in the cruise, Eddie. Yeah, so so that to me that would be a smart place for them to go. Yeah. Hey, um, I do uh, again. Uh, I do want to shift the gears here a little bit and and take uh, uh, I guess take point with with something you said on your show. And I'm and I'm gonna I'm gonna preface this by saying it's something my mother used to say to me. She's like, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Um, I'm take issue, and I mean that in a polite way, with the the way you were. I watched one of the clips where you you were talking about Paul selling his guitars, and in the straps and no, you know, and how. Because I've bought. I've bought guitars from Paul, stage played ones, and I didn't pay $21,000. I'm not saying that they don't offer that price, but I mean, I thought you were a little, uh, I guess, mock, a mocking sort of tone. And, and you can explain yourself, because when, when you were explaining that, you were laughing a little bit. And I'm like, hey, you know, I've bought a couple stage played guitars, and I did the, the meet and greet experience, and trust me, it wasn't that kind of money at all. And they were great experiences. And, you know, I I kind of saw it through a different set of eyes than you did. And I, I'd like you to explain, you know, why you feel that way. Because you know as well as I do, Eddie, that lots of bands do that stuff. And and to your point, you did say that too, you know, that Kiss is an you know, right. exclusive Right, which one exactly, goes, it goes, exactly goes back to my point about I don't know what, so many times I run into situations where people extract things and don't, you know, pull it out of context or take away what I say in the front or the end part. And I did say clearly that they are not the only ones that do this. Many others do it. What I was uh, talking about with the, uh, that particular situation was that was the price point because it was sent to me and it was online. I oh, I don't disagree with that. But, but yeah, here's what so, I disagreed with, though, because you kind of led into a discussion, and and, and if I and if I'm putting words in your mouth, I apologize. But you know, those the the twenty one thousand dollar guitars aren't three hundred dollar guitars, and you know, and you're paying those are the high end ones. And can some people do want the real high end ones? You know, I bought an acoustic that was stage played on the cruise. I watched him play it. And I watched it get put in the case, and then afterwards, I, you know, I went home with it, and and uh, the same thing with with an electric guitar as well. And I didn't pay anything close to that, you know. I paid a couple grand well, for each of them, and it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And if somebody, you know, does have that sort of disposable income, if they want to spend a couple grand and get treated like a king by by Paul Stanley and have him sign your thing and take a couple of pictures and. It's a wonderful experience, Eddie. I mean, it, it, it really is. And again, I've, there's a reason I've done it a few times. A, it, I didn't think it was too, you know, too extravagant. And, uh, you know, it was a great time. And, and I encourage any fan that, that sees that sort of thing, you know, obviously work within your budget. I mean, but, you know, Paul Stanley and, and, and Kiss didn't put a gun to my head. I looked and I went, hmm, OK, I can probably afford that and I'd like to do it. But I also exactly want to right. realize that some of those things that are you know, $20,000 or whatever they are, you know, that's what he asks. If he gets it, he gets it. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. And I, and again, when, when you were, when you were talking about that, you're kind of laughing a little bit and I'm like, come on, man, that, that's not fair. You know, there's, there's more to the story. I, I would, here's well, here's the part that I was laughing at that maybe was not included in what you heard. The price of the guitar was $18,000. And then it went on to say, if you'd like the strap, it's 3000 more. And I was simply having some fun with Jesus for 18 grand. Can you not throw in the strap? <laughs> kind of like, kind of like when, so once I started talking about that, and again, you know, my job is to engage my audience and, yeah. and, and it, that did exactly that because I then got people started sending me all sorts of links all sorts of bands that were selling all sorts of things and the funniest part that came out of all of that and by the way i'm with you a hundred percent about i don't begrudge anybody for selling anything because it goes back to what we said it's available to you if you buy it you buy it 
the optics of it can look a little weak sometimes, but Hey, if a person wants to sell it, that's up to them. You know, how much is too much? That's subjective. But the, the thing is, is that, um, where that Paul Stanley thing went about that guitar bit, which turned, was really funny. And so some people heard this, I guess some didn't was somebody had sent a link that Gene for the first time ever is making the swords that he breathed the fire off of on this tour available for purchase. And that was link was sent to me with the price. I think that was market price or something. There was not a price on it. Oh, it was 12,500. Um, because I'll tell you right now, if if Eddie, you don't know this about me, but I'm a pretty nutty kiss collector. Um, and I have been for, for many, many years. And, uh, I, I guess I, you know, anyways, that's, that's one of those things I have, I have stage worn costumes. I did a lot of damage there back in the 2000 auction. If you remember that, um, and, and, and in general, I just like collecting, you know, that sort of thing, stage played stuff, but I always wanted a sword, but I looked at that and I'm like, I'm not buying one for 12,500. <laughs> but my point is I, well, I, I didn't mock it or anything like that. I'm just like, well, okay, well, you know, and no, 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 but here's, Here's where I had some fun with the sword because the sell on the sword was the sell on the sword was there's only ever going to be one of these per show. And I was joking saying, if Gene starts selling these, he's going to start blowing fire in every friggin' song. So he can make 20 (laughs) available per show. So all of a sudden in the middle of the back, he's going to come out and start blowing fireballs. Hey, what's going on here? It's stage played by it. You know, after Kiss is done touring, he'll be like, I used this sword to start my barbecue this Saturday. Here, want to buy it? <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. So so some of this stuff is, some, is tongue in cheek. But again, if you listen to the whole bit all the way through, I always end with saying, if you got the bucks and you can swing it, it's great that the stuff is available to you. Nobody's got a gun in your head to do it. It's just having some fun with how over the top some of it can be. And that's where I headed into with the whole gene thing with the sword. By the way, real quickly, um, who is it that just said they're the big collector? Me, Mark. From I'm in Detroit. Mark. Mark, did you um, – I just was in Mexico. Have you ever been to the Kiss Lounge? No, we, uh, Michael, weren't we supposed we're, to have we're, that gentleman? We're going we're to reschedule and have him him on as a guest. I was just there for the first time because I was on tour with Deep Purple recently and through Mexico. And I went there. My God, does that guy have a place? It, yeah, it I've seen, I've my seen mind. His, incredible photos. His, I will tell you, and I'm not waving my own flag, uh, mine's pretty crazy too so um but you're in a basement mark not in a and not not in a in a bar no but if i had a bar i could certainly dress it up uh yeah if you get if you get to detroit eddie you should really go over and take a look at it but don't go alone (laughs) (laughs) but uh Okay, yeah, so it, just, it seems like from my perspective that you you for good or for bad have become a lightning rod at times for these types of subjects because either you are in a position saying what you're saying that makes people happy that go out and become the type of people who want to rip on everyone else or you have people who don't like what you say and show up to your radio show to rip on you for feeling the way you feel. So I suppose you're in kind of a, a catch-22 position where you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. But as long as you're telling people how you feel, there's nothing wrong with that. But but you know what, you know what, Tommy? I mean, and, and, and I'm not saying this to say we're at the same level as you are, Eddie. But that's exactly what we in our smaller sphere of KISS fans deal with on our podcast. Because we've always had that same attitude of just tell the truth, tell people what we think. And a lot of times that pisses people off. And to go back to something you said a while ago, Eddie, I agree. There's there's this problem with KISS fans that so many of them expect that you have to like everything the band and each band member does or you're not a fan. And And we've never played by those rules. It's like we can be a fan of Ace Frehley, but we can also say we don't like that song. We can be a fan of Kiss, but we can also say we hate the frickin' set list. 
there's some fans out there that it's all or nothing. It's the only band that I can think of that's like that. It's the only band where you get that level of blowback from a segment of their fans that are just going to buy everything, hook, line, and sinker, drink the Kool-Aid, and not, you know, and just fall in line. And I don't do anything that I do or say for effect or to get a rise out of anybody. My, this is my 36th year in radio. My hero in broadcasting growing up was Howard Stern. And I do a radically different sort of show than Howard Stern. But the one thing I learned from Howard Stern is that there's a guy that laid it out how he felt. He engaged his audience. He gave a chance for people to come back. He took it as hard as he gave it. And he stood by his grounds and he told the truth on what he was feeling at that time about what was going on. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to compromise that. Most bands and most fans get it. You can still be a fan and not love every single era or thing somebody has done. And I'll give you a great example of that. And, and, and this, this will fly in the face of anybody, who, which is the other accusation I hear all the time because of my history with Ace and Peter that I'm you know, just an Ace and Peter guy. That's the one that really makes me crazy. It's so ludicrous. But I just put out my top 10 albums of 2018. Guess what wasn't on it? Ace's record. Oh, you're a hater, man. I mean, you're a hater. So, I'm, so this is a guy that I've been friends with for 30 years. And if I'm just in the tank for Ace, so that's what I'm saying. I, there's so many holes in what people say or accuse me of. I just am honest, even if it's, even if it's to, you know, potentially having to be in an uncomfortable situation and say, yeah, Ace, I thought the record needed some work, you know, but, Right. Yeah, I, I couldn't in good conscience do that just because the guy's a friend of mine if I didn't feel that strongly about the record. So I none of this is that I'm, what I do ever is for effect or because I'm being compromised in some way. It's just because I'm a fan. At the end of the day, I'm a fan more than anything. And that's that's how I see things. That's through every lens that I see things through. So, you know, that's all I'm doing, man. It's just... um given my take, but it's always important to me that I, everyone else's opinion is just as valid. I don't have all the answers. I'm not saying I'm always right ever. I just, I just believe the one thing I just despise is this world we're in today where everybody is so sensitive and everybody has got to apologize and everybody is outraged for being outraged and, you say one thing that doesn't fall in line with what the current marching orders are. It's just like, you're a shit talker. You, you said this. And, and then the other thing is the, the you know, choice excerpts that are, are, are pulled and taken out of context to make it look like I, you know, I said something that, that, that you know, the, you know how many good things I've said about Kiss? I mean, the stuff they do for the military is amazing. Mm-hmm. The charitable things they've done is amazing. How many good things I've said about Tommy and Eric as people and players, all of that stuff. I mean, Gene, Gene has no problem with me. I've seen Gene in the halls. It's serious. I know he's been up there. It, the, the whole thing to me, when I look at it, is so silly that in some precincts I can be looked at as, you know, such an enemy when I've been so supportive of the band. But I get it. You know, I get it. Um, it is what it is. I live and die by it. And I truly believe that at the end of the day, it's what's gotten me my audience. It's what's kept me alive. If I've just been, if I was just towing the line, it wouldn't have made me stand out. You said, you said yourself, become a lightning rod. If you want to be a broadcaster with an audience that people listen because they either love you or hate you, you better be doing something that's keeping them interesting. And that's where you want to be. Hey, yeah. Eddie, I want to I want to go back in the conversation a little bit because you mentioned something that I, I wanted to bring up. Um, you mentioned when you because I'm I'm a big Roth guy. I was fortunate here. They they came through Cobo Hall here in Detroit and played a ton. And I saw them. You know, that one of the reasons I'm not a big Van Hagar fan is because I saw so many Roth shows prior to that. So, but using that analogy, you know, you know, because I go to all the Kiss expos and the Kiss conventions, and you know, I'm just again just nutty and always want to be there. 
You know how many people now only know, especially over the last 15 years, only know Kiss, the kids growing up, that, it, you know, that's Eric and Tommy. Because you said something earlier, like, you know, when you were a kid and you were looking at the records and you're like, you know, that's Gene, Paul, Peter and Ace. Well, there's kids now who, who have, you know, Sonic Boom and Monster and the, and the Live in Vegas. And that's Gene, Paul, Eric and Tommy. You know, and that's they've met them at the expos and they've seen them in concert with their parents. That, that's every bit as valid as Van Hagar, although I'm not a Van Hagar fan. So I, I kind of get it. What's your opinion on, you know, the new generation growing up that, you know, for better, or for worse, it is the Catman and Spaceman. And because that is what it is. I mean, that's certainly what's moving forward. And I think that's the bridge that Gene and Paul would like to see Kiss continue. Almost like Beatlemania. Well, you bet their asses they would. <laughs> that's the that's the master plan for sure, and that's why this whole thing, you know, started masterfully being put in place to, you know, to to, to make it Catman, Spaceman, and all that. Like you said, I, the earlier records, nobody was you know putting that billing on the records and calling themselves that. So, um, you know, that's just something that's going to come with time and generations. I mean. Kiss is playing to what? It's fourth, fifth generation now of people. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, third, fourth, I don't know what it is, but what would those same people do if they looked at the cover of Rock and Roll Over? Would they be educated enough to know, well, that's actually Ace and that's actually Peter and these are guys that replaced them? I mean, eventually they're going to have to get educated. I, I would find it hard pressed that, you know, maybe when you're a little kid, yeah, but as you go forward and discover a band, you're going to then go back and, and realize the history and realize what really went on. And, and yeah. I think that's where have a little, you know, have so, a little so, 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 um, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no go ahead. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I was pretty much done. Um, you know, also we as kiss fans though, also know where the bodies are buried. We know Peter didn't play for the most part on dynasty. We know that creatures of the night as great as a record is that ain't Gene, Paul, Eric, and Vinny all the way through. You know what I mean? We, we know. And, you know, when do you start drawing the line on that sort of thing, you know, with the ghost players and, you know, them not playing on all the stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I guess what I'm trying to look at is the big picture. When I sit back at the end of the day, and like I said earlier uh, in this conversation, when I'm at the show and that curtain falls, I still well up a little bit and I'm like, the greatest show on earth is here, baby, and I'm going to enjoy the next fucking two hours. And it, I still feel that way. And I felt that way on the Revenge Tour, and I felt that way on the Crazy Nights Tour. You know, I've always felt that way. I haven't missed a tour since Dynasty. And, you know, I seeing Kiss is just still a very emotional and fun thing to do, and there's nowhere else I'd rather be than, you know... Um, yeah, I, I'll give you because the last segue before I, I wanted to get your opinion on Tommy and I were both at the at the Kiss Cruise. We both went to these shows. Um, the whole accusations of the lip syncing and, and, and everything. I got to admit, when I was at the shows, I didn't that didn't even that flag never even came up. And I watched both shows live as it happened. And, you know, I. He, I, I enjoyed it show i didn't i didn't notice anything like that and um you know kiss has never said anything about it and you know the whole accusations of you know this is taped or that's taped you know you said earlier that you know steven tyler you know still sounds good i he had a guy singing along with him and and yes i know that's different than a tape but i mean he's he's needing some help um I, I remember on the Kill, Fuck, Die tour with Wasp, the background vocals were Blackie's fucking vocals. You, you know what I mean? I, I've, I've lived through this. And I, you know, as long as I'm at the show and I'm having a good time, I'm not nitpicking every little thing that happens. And, and until I know differently, you know, I was watching Paul sing. He was singing into a live mic uh, both nights on the Kiss Cruise. And I watched the shows Have live. Have you not seen the videos from the Kiss Cruise where there's his lead vocal coming out of the microphone and he's not singing I mean, um, again the- i i watched those shows live as they happened i was there um i i you know what but you're, fair- i mean when you're you're when you got a camera and a guy's 
face is on a microphone and he's he's sing he's mouthing something like listen or whatever he was ad libbing and the lead vocal comes out of the PA a completely different set of words that's pretty much dead to rights that you're singing to a track and well, when you're using a teleprompter for the first time on stage when you've never used one before another good sign you're singing to a track because you need the prompter to keep you in line for when the vocal track is coming up into the PA. So I don't know of a professional in the business. And I've also been told by people who are extremely in the know about this particular situation that has told me there is not a track, a lead vocal track running. And when you look at those videos, I don't know how anybody could even argue with it. Someone sent me a clip the other day of love gun and he's, He's he's mouthing one thing while completely different vocal is coming out. I'm not saying the microphone's not turned on. I'm just saying what's coming out. I mean, it's, it's pretty. I, I was close and, enough to be able to tell that he was singing the whole show. I'm not saying again because I'm not. I I I can't say with 100 percent confidence that they're not, you know, using a tape for a line or for a segment. I don't know. I don't. But I can tell you that I was close enough to the stage that air was passing through Paul's vo- vocal cords and he was singing into the microphone. I was that. And close. I don't deny he, I don't deny he, I don't deny that he was, but the question is, what are you, what is, what are you, you know, what are you hearing versus what's really be? I, here's, here's what I'll say about all this. I think that it's tragic. And this is exactly my point in all of this that here we are in my opinion with a band that should be celebrated and going out with a great victory lap that everyone is so excited about as all of us as kiss fans can be like what a ride this has been they're putting a button on an amazing career here's the guys that did it here's the guys that are ending it and they're doing it so strong and so great. And instead, we're sitting here talking about a band that's selling $21,000 guitars. Again, buy one if you want. Um, that has two guys, I don't care how you want to spin it, impersonating what original members created. And questions about whether the singer is actually singing. That's going out on top? I mean, that's where I have a problem with no one ever questioning uh, Paul Stanley in interviews because he repeatedly in his own way takes shots at other bands. I read, I read clips of him with him and in interviews with him for this tour and the bravado of how we're going out on top and we're so much bigger and badder and better than everyone is. And sure, some bands sound great, but look at the keyboard player. He's the one really singing. Well, first of all, it's still a human being. If you're talking about Aerosmith, the guy singing backing vocals, and they not only put him out there, but they introduce him. So there's no secret there. You know, I think that was also probably a little shot at Whitesnake, who have a keyboard player that does the same thing. And then to actually say, I know I'm going to sound great every night. When you by every measure allegedly are singing to a track. I mean, that is, that's beyond comprehension that you could be that you could actually go out and do that and and, and talk like that. So that sort of stuff really sits wrong with me because I just think that to to beat your chest like that, but then to go out and, you know, we're going out on top, but we've got all these questions being asked. Really? I mean, there's Eddie, only one Eddie, band that did. Eddie, I'll there's bring only up one band said. to me that did this the right way. The one band that set the blueprint for me for ending and doing it classy and the right way was Rush. Rush has never done it. There's no band that has ever or will ever do what Rush did. Well, I, I, I as a big, I like, I'm a huge Rush fan. Um, you know as well as I do, if you're honest with yourself. Getty had some pretty big vocal issues there at the end as well. Without Um, a doubt. So 
Not on the last tour, but previous tours, yeah. Because I'm going to say this. On their final tour, everyone who walked out of there didn't care. They had a ball. And everybody who's going to go to the KISS tour is not going to be checking off these, um, is there a you know, is there a backing track or is this? And they're just going to have fun. They want to see, as Kiss likes to say, play some loud rock and roll and blow some shit up. And and that's what, when I walk out of the, the very last Kiss show, whenever that is, that's all I'm going to care about. It's no different when I saw Rush, you know, on their farewell. I didn't go, oh, my God, get you. Not, no, I understand that. I understand he's not going to sound like he was when he was 25. I get it. It's no different when I just saw, you know, Purple this summer. You know, Ian's certainly playing everything in a lower register. But my, you've got to, you've got to, hold on, though. You've got to, you've got to agree. I mean, heck. And look, you're talking, we're talking about Paul's voice now. You're talking about a guy that was literally for years one of my all-time favorite singers. Nowhere in the universe do I expect him now to be able to sing, sing anything like he used to sing. But this is a guy that by every account has something seriously wrong with his voice to the point that he's whispering songs in Mexico, that the clips are so bad that the management is pulling them off of YouTube because people can't believe how historically awful he sounds. And suddenly, miraculously, overnight, we're going to do five shows a week and I'm going to sound better than ever. A, a miracle of the heavens must have opened. But, but here's the problem for me with that whole thing. And when you're looking at Facebook, and I can't speak to some of the Pulse stuff because I typically don't watch a lot of YouTube stuff. It just doesn't interest me. Like, like Mark had said earlier, Eddie, I like going because I feel like I'm a 12-year-old kid again. That's what it is for me. But. I was on the cruise and I saw those three Ace Fraley shows where Ace had missed some vocals. He missed some solos and all that. And I'm telling you, those are the three ga- best Ace Fraley shows with the exception of that 78 thing that he just did that I had ever seen. The set lists were incredible. They were absolutely unbelievable. Yet all I heard from people who were at those shows on the cruise was, God dang, that was the best I've ever seen. Boy, was that amazing. Some people said that that was the highlight of the cruise for them, but yet you'd never know it because if you go online, everybody who wasn't there was just ripping it nonstop to the point where it just got, I thought, completely out of hand. And I thought, well, you know, you guys weren't even there to experience. So that's the piece I guess I'm trying to say is there's, you can argue and say those things all you want. But at the end of the day, a big piece of it for me is the physical experience of being at the show. And that's sure. what's lost on the YouTube videos and all of that sort of thing. So I can't say yeah, whether but... they're stuff down or not. To me, that's neither here nor there. It's how am I going to feel when I physically go to that show? Am I going to walk away with a smile on my face or am I going to walk away disappointed? If that's all you're looking for, then that's, then that's fine. See, that comes back to being a show. A lot of what KISS is selling you right now is a show. Everything is the show. And yes, for years throughout their whole history, the show has been a huge part of KISS. But for me, the show was a part of KISS. I love the records. I love the songs. Oh, as do I we. Love yeah. I love the people who made those songs. I love what went into those songs. I, I love all of those elements. So it comes back to the question of when does this transition and how has this transition happen from being a band to what is clearly a brand? There's a huge difference. And it, okay, so now we have a band that apparently anybody can be in. It doesn't matter if they're singing or playing live or not. Nothing matters. It, you just, you have, to, you know, I mean, to me, that, I, I can't get my head around that. It's like, but, there's got to okay. be some semblance about what of the people who actually made the, the music and created the thing. And it's got to be something that's got to be a real entity as opposed to basically becoming this this thing that nothing matters as long as there's a big show. 
Yeah, but look at Rush. Let's use them as an example. Now, I'm not a huge Rush fan like you and Mark are, but I went, I've seen him probably five or six times over the years. The first time was, I want to say like Hemispheres or something like that. I've always thought they were okay, but I never thought they were fantastic. But I saw that last tour and I couldn't wait for it to end that night. And I'm going, thinking to myself, I can't believe I bought a ticket to this. It bored the living shit out of me. So it, the thing is, is that you, you can't make a leap that says, okay, there's these problems with this, this, and this, and make the assumption that every single person who's buying a ticket cares about that stuff. Now, you could be passionate for but, it. But, like but, but, wait, 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 wait. There's a, huge, there's a huge difference here. The difference being you just don't like Rush. So no matter what, I would be, I would be in misery watching a show like that if I didn't like Rush that much. It would be an endurance test. I, just like if I went to see The Grateful Dead, I'm not a deadhead, couldn't sit through. I mean, the endurance test. Rush is ending and ended with the three guys that essentially started it, all playing live, all playing real to the best of their abilities. Getty sang on that tour better than he had in years. And they did the best they could. And they knew when to say when. They didn't milk the farewell card a couple times. They didn't even say farewell tour. And they went out. And they kind of gave a little wink to the fans and said, hey, we're going to play our whole history backwards to forwards. We're giving you a little wink that this is probably it. Hope you guys come out. And they put this brilliant spectacle together that if you're a fan of what they do, you would have loved. But God, if you're not a Rush fan, that would have been brutal to sit through. I wouldn't have been able to do it. Well, so no, I I'm a that. casual fan. There's I knew a big difference the... between that and then Rush all of a sudden going out tomorrow and getting three guys to replace themselves or two guys and going out and putting out a rush show. Well, that's probably going to happen. Matter of fact, there's a touring rush tribute band now. I mean, that that's how the music's going to continue. It's, it's really a bastardized version of Beatlemania and Jersey well, boys. That is the future, unfortunately. And it's the same argument with cheap trick. I, I am a huge cheap trick fan. I would say they're second to none for me other than possibly kiss, but I have a handful Thank God Bunny Carlos is gone. I am so freaking happy he is out of there because they're a better band now with Dax Nielsen as the drummer. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Yeah. I, well, I know you're a drummer, Mark. But so I, I just, all I'm, my point is this. Everyone has a different perspective, not right or not wrong, like you were saying. But also at the right. same time, you got to know that everyone wants something different out of it. So I don't. I don't read a lot of interviews with Paul Stanley. I can't tell you what he's said or hasn't said about different bands and lip syncing. None of that stuff really interests me. It's not right or wrong. It's just it's not something in my wheelhouse. So I'm going for that 12-year-old experience again. That's why I'm going. And if I can walk out of there feeling that way, then I got my money's worth. That I guess that's my perspective, you know? And so I don't really kind of, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about the other stuff. And I know that there are a lot of impassioned fans because you guys, you hear it on your show. We hear it on ours that they want to dissect things and they have a very specific feeling about one thing or another. But I, I'll be the last one to sit on YouTube and listen to a bunch of different uh, live clips, trying to see if I can bust someone for lip syncing or, or missing a note or, or whatever it is that that's got someone upset that week. And so that well, I got, I've got a I've got a blanket issue. See, I couldn't disagree with you more on that because I've got a blanket issue with not just when it comes to Kiss, who uh, again every indicator from anybody who's looking at this from a professional angle, the band doesn't. There are so many telltale signs when a band is playing to tracks that that every box will be checked, and and eventually you get snagged on it. And there's there's glaringly obvious videos from that cruise that you don't have to be a, a, a genius or a sleuth to see one, one something coming one lead vocal coming out and a different thing he's saying into the microphone so make of that what you will but that's pretty as blatant as it could possibly get let's see what they do on the tour but here's the thing my issue with this whole concept of lip syncing and running a ton of tracks is way, way, way beyond Kiss. Oh, uh, God, Kiss, yeah. That's what we've don't... talked about. There's some big touring acts right now that 70% of their show plus 
is all mic'd up and ready to go with with pre rec uh, vocals. It is. It is for me. In the last year or so, and and me talking about this has gone way way beyond or before any of this Kiss stuff. And and it has been a hot button for me for a long time now, and continues to be, because I think it is a dangerous slope for rock music. Nothing to do with Kiss across the board in rock music. The prominence of bands playing to tracks, having vocals on tracks, having instruments on tracks is out of control. In the pop world, it's basically accepted. It's the norm. And if you remember, it wasn't always like that. Ashley Simpson was on Saturday Night Live, and there was outrage because she was caught doing SNL to a track. Yeah, I remember that. Okay? And and outrage. Now, you... Every single pop act, especially on TV, singing tracks. We're now at that point in rock music. To me, all that's great about rock music is the recklessness, the live, the spontaneity, the just the fly without the net, the 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 big, you know, all those sounds. We're at a point now where that is all on the cusp of going away because of technology and these guys leaning on this stuff. And we're at a point now where people are paying thousands of dollars for concert tickets to see a band, quote unquote, live, and maybe they're getting 60% live, 70% live. The sad truth is 90% of the people won't know or care. 90% of the people are like the people we talked about earlier. They don't care. They don't want to know about the set list. They don't know who's in the band, who's in the lineup. They want to hear a couple hits that they know, see a big show have a couple beers, go home. Nothing wrong with that. But to me, it's a really, really dangerous thing for rock music when these bands, because what are we, where are we going with this? Are we ultimately just going to start paying for karaoke? I could, I don't play a note and I can't sing. And tomorrow I could start a band and sound great. If I want to just lean on technology how did what differentiates a band from having a good night versus a bad night if what you're listening to is a recording? This is a real, real issue right now, and bands need to be called on it across the board, in my opinion. And you know what you're seeing happening, and I'm hearing about it every day. The bands that are putting in the work to sing and play 100% live are wanting the acknowledgement for it. I've had this conversation with Lizzie Hale. I've had this conversation with Joe Elliott. I've had this conversation with a lot of guys. Tommy Shaw from Styx. They're coming out on stage and saying, hey, we just want you guys to know everything you're hearing off this stage is live and it's its original key. The last tour Queen did, they actually released a video of them doing their vocal warm-ups to prove the backing vocals were live. So you're not you're seeing the bands that are actually putting the work in and doing it real in a backhanded way start of saying, hey, you know, how about some props for the guys that are keeping it real? Because look what we're putting in to not rely on some sort of track. To me, it's, it's a real bad thing for rock music. And, uh, yeah. you know, I really, really hope that that it, pe- people take it out. I just talked to the guy in Ghost. I just had Tobias, the singer and ghost on my show. And I went straight at him. I said, Hey, what's the deal with tracks with you? I mean, how much of what you're doing is real up there. And to his credit, he told me that he was, he had a lot of tracks going for a long time. And he said, now that he has money and can afford to have extra musicians and the people to create the sound, he wants to create, he's taking them out of his show because, and this is his words, and I quote, because it feels like cheating. And I applaud the guy like Cal for being honest about it and, uh, and, and for doing it. It's just something that I just don't think we can have happen in our world of rock. I just think, I think it's a really, really bad thing and it's getting way too, way too accepted. Yeah, and, and, 2000, and, 2016 wasn't that long ago, just a few years. On the 2016 Freedom to Rock tour, Paul made mention of that 
at the shows that I went to, that this is a band. This is, there's no one backstage. There's, you got, do you remember that Tommy? Um, Paul yeah, I mentioned do. that. So I, I guess moving forward, we don't know because they haven't played any shows yet on the, you know, right. on, on, so we don't know what's going to happen. And, and I guess that's another thing with it too. Uh, again, you know, I sat through both the shows on the cruise. I didn't notice at the time and I haven't really done that much extensive work going into looking at stuff. Again, I'm like, Tommy, I, I lived it. I don't need to go watch it on YouTube or whatever. Uh, I had a great time. I love the shows. Um, but you know, Kiss mentioned that too, as early as recently as their last tour. So, you know, I, moving forward, we're going to see, you know, what happens. I, and, and, you know, I, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm also going to give them the benefit of the doubt that I know how much effort and work they're putting into to making sure that this up, upcoming tour is going to be, you know, the best they can make it um, with the new staging and, and stuff. I've been, I'm, pretty lucky actually I, I i did get to see some of the new some video of the new stage recently um and let me tell you kiss fans you're gonna be freaking blown away um without giving anything up so you know um i'm i'm so excited and i guess to uh you know that's how come you know i i i guess i i kind of you know we're all kiss fans you, you kiss is, is you wear your kiss fandom on your sleeve you know and you know i want to if I think that, you know, Kiss isn't getting a, a fair deal or something, I'm going to say something. And, and you know, uh, I, I, I'm i looking forward to this tour. I think it's going to be fantastic. And, you know, everything from buying guitars to, you know, looking at swords and all that other stuff. Look, man, it's Kiss. I just want to have a good time. I want to feel like I'm 12 years old here at 53. And that's what I'm going to be doing for the next couple of years, I'm hoping, you know, as long as they and keep that's touring. that's totally your prerogative? It's totally your prerogative, and I respect that. I respect anybody, how anybody feels, how they connect, and how they uh, react to all this stuff. My question to you will be this, though. If they do the no original members deal, are you on board with that? Is that cool with you, too? You know, you know, Eddie, I'll be honest. It's something I would check out just because I'm I'm a Kiss fan, you know. Um, check out meaning like I'm out or check out go to. No, check out go to. Um, oh, okay. Because I I, I want to hear the songs. I again too. I'm you know if 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 and when that does happen, I'll be you know closer to sixty. Um, maybe then I want to bring my grandkid there if I have one at the time. Wait, wait, this end of the world tour is going seven years now? <laughs> Did you say you were 53? Come on, come on, Eddie. You know Gene. If he can sell out a second night at that city, he's going to come back around again. Wait, if you're 53 and you're going to be 70 when that happens, this thing's going 17 years. <laughs> no, no, I didn't say 70. I said uh, I said I'll be just uh, just under 60. Oh, when, so you're still, still seven, six, seven years. All right. Yeah, I think and for me, the answer to that question, Eddie, would be, I don't know. I mean, for me, I it's still, I love the guys that are in the band. I, once Gene and Paul are gone, I don't know. I, I, you, I, you know what? I, 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 will, I will reserve judgment on saying I don't support it or it sucks until I see something. That's my point, I guess. Yeah, because I like going to, I, I don't mind going to see some of the tribute bands. Some of those guys are really amazing. Oh, and also, Eddie... Some are better than the real band. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, moving forward, people have asked me because they know how passionate I am about Kiss. Like, are you all upset that the, this is the end of the road? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? There's going to be Gene Simmons solo shows, and there's going to be Paul Stanley solo shows, and Ace, as long as they can prop them up on stage. I mean... Once Kiss is over, there's still going to be Kiss things to go to, and and one of them may be the Kiss 2.0. I don't know. I mean, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But you know, Paul's going to continue doing stuff. Um, I'm looking forward to the Soul Station thing. I think it's going to be cool. I'm from Detroit. I love Motown music. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I, I you know, and, and it's no different than you know any of the other bands that I love. Um, I, I continue to support them. Um, and I'm going to keep doing it because I'm a music fan. And, uh, you know, that's just the long and short of it. Well, again, that's your prerogative. I, I, uh, 
I've said historically, consistently, I've ne- I don't have any issue and never did with any bands uh, ever changing members or having replacement members. I get it. Not everybody lasts forever, but I do think that there's a line in the sand, and I do think you have to kind of say no when you know no when to say when. And and again, those words and what I'm saying there uh, directly directly no one said them more than Fist did at the time that they were going to say goodbye and then i know that was rewritten well we were really just saying goodbye to ace and peter and we had more life and all that great if that's and if people are down with all that time i don't judge anybody for what they feel or like or want to do or don't want to do or how they do or don't spend their money for me you know my memory of kiss and what kiss stood for and the energy and the the real raw sound of that band and what they did on stage with whatever lineup for me is is very much about uh t- about 2000 back and that's that's what i look at my era as a kiss fan and you know that's how it will remain and unless something changes but uh doesn't mean i judge anybody else for feeling differently or choosing to to go to what they want to go to everybody is free to to do what they want just as everybody is free and should be free to express their opinions and that at the end of the day is what i have the biggest problem with it's just like you know don't say i'm not a fan don't say that i'm not entitled to say this don't make stuff up because it fits your narrative or you feel it gets you in better with your friends or the band you know, listen to what I really have to say. Listen to, if you're going to listen, you know, just, just be objective about it. Listen, it's fine to have a dissenting opinion on a certain period of time. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just uh, the, the blanket issue here for me across the board is, and, and it's not just with Kiss, it's just with everything. It's like, my gosh, can we not actually have uh, a, an opinion anymore that doesn't fall in line with, you know, the marching orders of the day? And, and, uh, you know, I've, I'll always fight that that mentality. I think that that's really dangerous as well. Eddie, Amen. Eddie, you, you know, Eddie. you're allowed to, to, you know, I always love the saying, we'll agree to disagree. There's nothing wrong with that. That's yeah. human nature. Eddie, I mean, that's you, the way you did you ever imagine back in 79 when all four of us were taking heat from the Led Zeppelin fans because we were big Kiss fans that, you move it was forward, always Zeppelin people. You, you move Jesus. forward to 2019, and we're taking heat from other Kiss fans now. Other Kiss <laughs> fans are attacking us for liking Kiss. It, it, that that's what, what that would be me. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, you're not attacking us, and we're not attacking you. I think we both right. hear from the Kiss fans who don't agree with what our opinions are. You know, I will say this on the show, and I've always said this online. I have great respect for you because you come out and you are very honest. It's your opinion. You have the right to say what you think. I don't have to agree with it. You're not making me agree with it. That's great. You have the same attitude on your show as we do on ours. It's the outside listeners who come in and say, Eddie, you're wrong for saying that. No, you're not. It's your opinion. You don't have to agree with it, and I'm not making you agree with it. That that's what right. if you're that, factually if you're factually wrong about stuff, which I have been many times and probably will be again, I welcome the correction. There's so many times I'll say something, uh, and I'm off, or you know, certainly you know, off a little bit, and I'll be like, oh, you know, uh, thank you, man. I, I I was dead wrong on that one. I was talking today on the air about the Queen biopic and the fact that it's become the biggest music biopic, and I I called myself out on my own show on the air today. I said, man, I was dead wrong about my prediction for box office in America on that. So I, I welcome that. I mean, that's, that's all well and good. But, yeah, to be told you're wrong for your opinion on something is, uh, is pretty ridiculous. And I, and I, I just it's, – it's unfortunate that, you know, some people sort of operate like that. But I, I, I don't have a problem uh, uh, running, running from anything. I don't dodge anything. I, I say all the time – I. I am still a Kiss fan, regardless of what people think. I'm just not a fan of what they do now. But, man, I literally just spent a weekend reading page for page this Danger Zone book about Crazy Nights. It's like, you got to be pretty deep into Kiss to be able to have done that. Yeah, I did uh, did that. (laughs) And I enjoyed it. So it's like, you know, uh, I, I don't. 
the, this whole thing of like, and I won't let, whether it be, you know, Paul or certain segment of the fans and, you know, the way that uh, they've reacted to things that I've said or not said in a lot of cases, um, I won't let that interfere with my support of the band. Like I said, I still every year do my all kiss special. I still play more kiss in their home market, the biggest market in the world than anybody by far. And, and I'm not the only one, I'm not just playing rock and roll all night. So I don't, I don't let that, um, you know, shade what, what I do. It comes with the territory. It is what it is. I, I wish more fans would get that. And the only problem I have at the end of the day is when people say I said things or think I said things that were completely out of context and all these clips that end up online where, you know, they're completely pulled out with all the good things that I've said afterwards or before that statement was made. And that, that runs, that causes me a lot of problems with not just Kiss, but other bands too. I'm like, whoa, 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 have a listen to the whole thing. I mean, I've gotten into that with some other bands recently too and had to sit down and talk to them about it and, and let them know how it was really said. And they go, oh, okay, we get it. And see, and so, that happens, I think, I'm to lucky. everybody. That happens to everyone huh? if you're doing any kind of a radio show or podcast. Some people just hear what they want to hear, and they just literally invent words that they say you said in the middle of a sentence that is just not accurate. Yeah, and it's, it, again, it comes with the territory, but it's, it's uh, way more magnified now because of the Internet, because n- nobody wants to click on something that's, a positive nobody wants to click on somebody telling you how great something is they want to click on something that's going to stir the pot so when people find ways that they can do that and things that they can use to get some some clicks that's what they're going to isolate and manipulate how they have to and it's unfortunate but um i what i hope is that most of the artists if there is ever a question about that will most of them know me well enough to call me or text me and say hey what's up with this and i'll i'll have the discussion in some cases, yep. maybe I did say it and I got to own it, but but um, what I have a problem with with is when it's completely taken, you know, out of context and just to serve somebody's agenda. Eddie, yeah. Eddie, we we've been talking for just about two hours here, and I got to say this is probably the the best conversation we've had of the of the three times you've been on. This is this has been awesome. I was going to say all year. Yeah, all year. The be- yeah, it's our best show all year. <laughs> first show. Is this the first show of the year? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, you listen, you know, I want to give you give you your Gene Simmons moment here. Plug whatever you want to plug. Wow. Um, well, I'm on every day on Sirius XM. I do a show called Trunk Nation. It's on channel 106, which is uh, the channel is called Volume. It is a all talk about music channel started over a little over two years ago and it's been an absolute blast and like i was saying earlier i equate it to sports talk for rock fans so it's an open forum a lot of great interviews i've done some amazing (coughs) excuse me for getting over the flu i've done some amazing um interviews and guests and had some great moments on there so that's my daily gig right now i do a second show on sirius on mondays as well which is 5 to 8 p.m. Eastern on 39. That one I actually play music in. And, uh, you know, got the terrestrial radio show. It's on about 35 cities. I got a uh, podcast, which is basically one of my highlight interviews from my uh, daily show on Sirius, just up as a podcast for people to hear that don't get the service or live outside of the U.S. and Canada. And then the last thing is I have a, a new TV series that debuted last summer called Trunk Fest. It's on Access TV. Excellent. And I'm currently shooting season two of that, and that will premiere uh, next summer, uh, this summer coming up. And it's me covering music festivals. It's more a travel show, but it's taking me to music festivals and covering what goes on at them. So got a lot of good stuff going on, and uh, it's been, um, you know, it's been great to still have, you know, be such an old bastard and still have all these great opportunities. Get, get paid yeah. to be a music fan. Yeah, at the end of the day, man, that's what it's about is to be a music fan. And, you know, I would I would just say to you guys, man, I, I appreciate talking to you. I, I enjoy this kind of conversation. I enjoy the back and forth, the agree, the disagree. To, 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 that's what being a fan is. 
I mean, to do that in a respectful way and, and debate and discuss, that's what being a fan is. And, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys having me on. I appreciate the opportunity to do this with you. And, you know, even I'm sure there's plenty of people that listen to this, your podcast, that uh, like me and plenty that don't. But that's fine, too. As long as you're listening, I appreciate it. Awesome. You know, well, the, only difference, the only difference here is we used to do this over the lunch table with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> you get over the, the, the Internet, you know, just talking music and stuff. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know what? Um, it's all about the love of and the passion of music, man. And there's nothing better. Well, you're always you're always welcome on anytime you want to come on, Eddie. Thank you for taking time with us today. Hey guys, thank you for uh, thank you for having me, and uh, hope you enjoy this tour coming up. And if Ace and Peter end up showing up in any of the dates, maybe I'll actually be there. Otherwise, <laughs> uh, probably I'll be probably watching those uh, YouTube videos from afar. But uh, that real quick, that's the last thing any we didn't touch on. Among you guys, do you think there's going to be any involvement here? I mean, Ace is on record saying he's not been contacted. I, I thought it was really telling when Ace said on the air with me that on the cruise he had no interaction with Gene and Paul at all beyond that opening jam moment. Um, do you guys think there's going to be anything? You know, my, my opinion, Eddie, is I think the last last show or the last – number of shows wherever it might be there's going to be a pay-per-view and there'll be a dvd filmed of it and i could see peter coming out invite being invited to come out and sing beth i could see ace being invited to come out and you know do shock me and then everybody do rock and roll all night as the very final kiss song that's i that, agree with you 100%. I, I think that's yeah, what yeah, I think. if anything it's... happens it would be that well, and in all fairness, too, I mean, I went on that cruise this year, my first one, and that's like living in a vacuum. So I don't know how they work all that out, but it seemed like, uh, you know, there wasn't much room to move. So I don't know if it's intentional or not, but I would agree with Michael that it's going to be at the very, very end to say final bow. I think that only makes common sense. They're going to, you know, they're going to trot them out for the the last hurrah and you know but you know any one, delusion one, one big final paycheck live album dvd sure. pay-per-view the whole the whole deal yeah, yeah and well it, and i'll go one further i'll go one further they may even do it i mean like, like well i guess you guys are agreeing with this as a final 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 thing like announce it this is the last show ever here it is it's at the garden or the yep. forum Mm -hmm. And and yeah, you know, special guests will be Ace Freely, Peter Chris, a song or two, like you said. Uh, again, the makeup issue comes into play strong there. Both Ace and Peter have said it, and that's where the makeup thing rears its head again as being a problem because those guys are not going to walk out there without makeup with Tommy and Eric as in their makeup, and they're not going to come out with two guys in that outfit. So, that's where it gets sticky. I ran into this with the Rock Honors thing years ago, not to start yeah. the whole conversation, but I was involved in that as a producer. I was directly involved with the Kiss tribute and Ace and all that. And you know, I can tell you it was a sticky, sticky situation at that time. So that could be an issue too, but you know, maybe they'll figure out some workaround around that. I don't know, but I, I would think that there's got to be, you know, that one moment. And by the way, I mean, I think it'd be great if, if Bruce was involved too. Oh, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. absolutely. I mean, as, as a fan, I think it would be great if everybody was involved and that would include Vinny. Now, speaking as somebody who knows the way things operate, I don't see Vinny ever being involved. But, you know, as a fan, I would love to see every living member brought on stage. I'd love to see a video montage memorial to Mark St. John, to Eric Carr. You know, I think that's the way a fan would like to see it done. I agree. I agree. I agree completely. And I would agree with you what you said about Vinny. However, did anybody in a million years ever think they'd see Vinny join Gene for a vault thing? True. 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 I didn't. I mean, that, that was just, I never, I couldn't believe that that was when I did that first interview with Vinny at the, at the Atlanta Expo, and he said, 
oh, yeah, Gene was leaving me voicemails. I was like, what? Uh, you know, because just a couple weeks later, there had been a, you know, Gene killed him in the press. And I was just like, so I never saw that coming. So I, I, I also think the Vinny thing is highly, highly unlikely, but. But we one Kiss thing we learned is Kiss land, anything's possible. I was just gonna say that that that's the saying that Kiss lives by. Anything is possible, and we just don't know. That last show, they may put their issues aside, and there may, may be enough money on the table that they bite their lips for two hours. Anything's possible. We're just here to pay for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Spoken like a true Kiss fan. <laughs> Eddie, thank you again for joining us. This was a great conversation. Thanks, Eddie. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. I'll feel, see feel, you soon. Feel better. So, guys, I, like I said, I think that was our best conversation with Eddie. He's been on three times. That was a real solid conversation i mean total i have total respect for his different views and opinions he doesn't he doesn't have the same views we all do and that's 100 percent fine i'm i'm so cool with that and he's not forcing his views on anybody you're not forced to listen to him on the air you can turn that dial if you don't like what he's saying just like you can stop the button when you don't like what we're saying but somehow mm-hmm. You guys keep coming back to listen. We try to keep giving you good content. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one this week. Yeah. I mean, this, the, the, I, you know, this one, I felt there was a couple times I'm just like, I'm sitting back. And I'm just letting Eddie talk. Cause you know, I want him to speak his mind. I'm letting Mark talk. Cause I know Mark, you had the, this, I think this conversation really, you had a lot more invested in this than Tommy and I even had because you had more well, feelings about it. But I wanted, you know, I just wanted to let you guys roll with it. What I was happy about is he didn't duck any of the issues. No. You know, he took them straight on as he should. I yep. mean, and you know what? As I said, you know, there's nothing wrong with just, you know, agreeing to disagree. There's nothing wrong. That is a that concept is a great concept. That's right. what makes us all who we are. Well, yeah, and, and that was the biggest thing for me is, is I, I felt like Mark hadn't spoken to him before. So, you know, he had lots to say, and a lot of the points you were making I would have said or wanted to bring up. But the big thing for me I wanted to drive home is that you can't paint with a broad brush that everybody that still enjoys what they're doing today is somehow suckered into something. It's like I'm going by choice. I'm going because I want to have the experience. And I, I believe that's how he um... – how he feels, I, yeah, I, I think. I think. I think the problem is, and we have this even at on 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 our show at times. Sometimes the way we express those feelings doesn't quite come out the way we want it to. The words may not be perfect, then all of a sudden somebody takes the words and then just rolls with it. Listen, at the end of the day, you don't have to agree with what we say. You don't have to agree with what Eddie says. You just Stop being haters because you don't like it. Just be be mature enough to just like you said, Mark. Agree to disagree. There's nothing wrong with that. So there you go. How about homework? Homework. What 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 was the most revealing thing that Eddie said this week? Anything else? Was oh, there well, any time that uh, you wanted to stop, <laughs> stop the recording, and yell at either myself, Tommy, Michael, or Eddie? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm sure that's a yeah, that's a for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and what who did who, what do you agree with? What points that were made, regardless of the side? What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? Let's have this type of civil conversation move forward now onto our Facebook page, onto our YouTube speaker. Let's talk about this. There you go. And I love the fact that he brought that up to you. Wasn't it nice to have a nice civil yes. conversation about when you totally see things from the opposite end of the spectrum, but you know, you, you know what, you know what this reminded me of the conversation we had with D Snyder when he was on. Remember? Cause that, that was when, yeah, when D so. when D and Paul were going at it. We had no idea what was going to go on with D coming on a KISS podcast. And that guy was so respectful and was such a great conversation. 
So, yeah, there's your homework. Reminder, every Sunday night, 8 p.m. Pacific, Three Sides of the Coin Radio on the Monsters of Rock channel on Dash Radio or head over to Three Sides of the Three Sides of the Coin Radio dot com. 8 p.m. Pacific. It's live. You got to listen live. That's it. We'll see you next week on Three Sides of the Coin. So you love the show. Go to iTunes dot Three Sides of the Coin dot com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks. Take three sides of the coin with you anywhere. Download your five-star rated free smartphone app today and listen on your Android or Apple smartphone. Visit android.threesidesofthecoin.com or ios.threesidesofthecoin.com. Download your free free copy of the KISS School of Marketing. 11 Lessons I Learned Working with KISS. The number one downloaded business book on Noise Trade. Go to books.noisetrade.com slash Michael Brandvold. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. So you love the show. Go to iTunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks.